Hello, folks. My name's Abu, and as always, I'm joined today by Opsa. That's right. For today's science fiction book club bonus episode. Uh huh. About Silo season two. Oh yeah. The show is finally out. That's right. We have watched Silo season two episode one, and, and presumably, dear listener, so have you. I sure hope so. I sure hope so because yes. we're talking about it today. That's right. So over the next thirty minutes or so, Opsa, we are going to share. Just sort of our first impressions, yes. our gut reactions to yep. the show so far. Obviously, it's coming out episodic, so we've seen episode one, and that's what we're here to talk about today. As far as spoilers go, for anybody who's watching, we highly recommend that you watch all of Silo season one. Yes, naturally. Uh, naturally. I should have so. And we are covering the book on the show, so as long as you are up to the reading that we've covered through on the podcast so far, you should be good to go. Yeah. Because that that's where you and I are in the book oh, as right. well. Yeah. We haven't finished it yet, but we're basically in the final third of it. So yeah. as long as you've read the first two thirds of the book. Let's get into it. So Silo, season two, episode one, is a fairly minimalist episode. Yeah. I mean, there's even not a whole lot to recap here. Like the recap could be basically summarized as, in this episode, we follow Juliet beyond the confines of the silo yeah. into, another, into silo another silo right next door. Yeah. This one has bodies littered oh, everywhere. Man. This silo is clearly, at first glance, abandoned. Yes. And we follow Juliet down into this silo as she removes, well, first she has to find her way in, yep. and then she removes the bulky suit yep. because her oxygen is running out. And then countless obstacles. Obviously. Countless obstacles, yeah. right. She is problem solving her way yes. through a number of obstacles. She's a fighter. Yes. She's got grit, and uh, she's determined to survive out here yep. at all costs. And of course, she's obviously blown away by the fact that there is another silo <laughs> yeah. and other people here yeah, yeah. who are all dead somehow. Yeah. What happened? What's going on? All the larger mysteries at play, of course, yeah. in this story. Really striking stuff. Yeah. And I I really liked that a, there was a large midsection of the episode that could have been boring, but honestly was paced so well yeah. where she has to figure out a way to cross the bridge. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and it's also free of dialogue, so it's no pretty dialogue. intense. I mean... Uh, yeah, but I agree. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think it was really well paced. Yeah. And I think the obstacles were present and difficult enough to be interesting without yeah. overstaying their welcome. Totally. And it was satisfying. Yes. To watch Juliet overcome things yes. like crossing that bridge. Yeah. To figure out who's on the other side, yeah. that sort of thing. And you expect that she's going to make it across. She's going to yeah. traverse the obstacles that come her way. But I'm still, you know, waiting with bated breath, just like I think all of us. Uh, as she's confronted by these situations, yes. like is she going to make it across? You know, is she gonna uh, is she able to penetrate further into the silo? And again and again, she she is. Yeah, it's really great stuff. Yeah. And I think something obviously we can't help but compare and contrast the book and the show. Something the book lacks, you know, like yeah. there's great tension in the Juliet entering the other silo chapters, and there are a number of obstacles she faces in the book as well. But I think this first episode of the show is an example of something this show has done super well since the first season, yeah. since the first episode of the first season, which is slow down. Like this oh, is such totally. an excellent example totally. of slow burn television yes, that absolutely. is enjoyable yes. to watch. Yeah. I, I think the totally first season agree. did that. It yeah. expanded the story in a way where we had more time with basically everything, yep. with the characters, with the story arcs, with the story beats and yes. the moments and the interactions and relationships, more time with all of that. Oh yeah, totally. We get more time with Julia in this silo as well, yeah. which is entertaining. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and then, of course, the episode wraps up on kind of a bombshell. The silo is not completely abandoned. Yeah. And there is a man behind a door oh, yeah. who is threatening to kill Juliet if she tries to enter his room. Yes. <laughs> it is a pretty disturbing <laughs> yeah. conversation yes. because he is talking to her like, they're old friends initially yes. and has basically lured her there with the uh, music that he was playing mm -hmm. uh, only then to uh, kind of have a mini diatribe and uh, threaten to kill her. Yeah. Really wild stuff. And of course, we know from where we are in the book right now, this is the character Solo yep. that she will meet. Um, interesting that he is antagonistic initially right. here right. in the show, which again, to me, Makes a lot of sense. Like, logically speaking, if you have been stuck alone oh, in a silo yeah. for years, yeah. decades, yeah. any other human interaction is going to 
boggle your mind. Yeah. And your initial reaction is going to be fear. Yeah. And uh, in the book, he's like very warm and welcome, right. welcoming to Juliet. Yeah. I definitely like that at first here, there's some antagonism. I, yeah. I suspect they'll get over it as the season goes on. Yeah. What did you think? How? What was your impressions of the first episode? <laughs> yeah. I mean, back with a bang. I, yes. I thought this was such a great start to the, to the second season. And we also got to witness at the beginning of it in that first episode what every silo generation fears, oh, an uprising. Yes. And that... I mean, those initial scenes I thought were uh, just phenomenal. Um, you know, we essentially get an experience watching this show that in many ways does reflect, I think, Hugh Howey's intent with the book mm -hmm. and that we have definitely been uh, really positive about uh, in that it is so visually rich, oh, you know, and, yes. and in this medium, we also get a really rich soundscape, you know, like just the, the footsteps of the kid running through to tell his father that he's got this message from mechanical, the sound of that torch, uh, you know, when we see Juliet walking outside, the destruction and chaos and the bodies that are littered outside, uh, just, just, I mean, phenomenal. Phenomenal. And, also, the contrast with her like pristine white suit, I I just thought that was such a beautiful juxtaposition of uh, what you know essentially the intent of the silos were, which was to preserve the remnants of humanity. We've got yeah. you know theoretically like, the last ten thousand people that are bottled together in the silo, and uh, they're doing their utmost to essentially like preserve whatever sanity and hygiene and yeah. you know whatever they can and uh to see that uh pitted against the the outside and and what they fear uh and and also to see that it was ultimately a failed uprising i mean they yes you know whether or not they succeeded in going outside it's clear that uh outside is not a place that anybody in fact wants to be yeah uh, so I, I i thought this was such a honestly fantastic uh uh, start to the uh, the second second season here. I agree. And what great storytelling. And again, these ideas are in the book, but I do think they're presented in either sort of a rushed way or a weaker, less impactful way in the book, where we see what can go wrong in an uprising, which is the very thing that the people in charge, the people in do judicial, Sims, uh, certainly Bernard, yes. the authoritarian rulers of the silo, yeah. this is the thing they fear happening. Exactly right. And we see it happen. Yeah. And then we see the aftermath with Juliet walking through corpses yes. littered everywhere. And I think that illustrates to us the great fear and illustrates to us why perhaps the silos were set up in the way they were right. with their this like authoritarian rule. Yeah with this very clear judicial IT conspiracy. Yeah. And it's fascinating. I mean, to to see it visualized in that way, I think is so powerful and so impactful. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and in fact, I think for Juliet to see it as well and to experience it herself. Yeah. Some other things I wanted to say about this first episode. I loved the flashbacks to Juliet's childhood. Oh, yes. So good. Very effective. Very I mean, effective. Yeah, totally. I mean, they set up, set up for us this really beautiful relationship between Juliet yes. and the folks of the Down Deep. Yes, and especially with, Shirley Walker. Shirley Walker. Yes, yeah. Yeah, some characters that we know and love from the first totally. season that we know Juliet is close to. Yes. Juliet calling Walker in a moment of doubt in the first season, remember? Right. When right. she's right. thinking about quitting the gig and yes. Walker's like, you're up there to find the truth, yeah. girl. The capital T truth. Get up there and yeah. do it. That's right. So what if a man broke your heart, huh? <laughs> yeah. That shouldn't stop you from finding the That's truth. Right. Yeah. So we see where that beautiful relationship yes. came from yeah. through these lovely little flashbacks. Yeah. And we see Juliet sort of adjusting to life in the down deep right. and her adaptability. Yes. Um, but also the trauma that she has dealt with since childhood. Totally. You know, the, yeah. the how she lost her mother to suicide, how she was isolated from other children and had a difficult time connecting with right. other people. Right. We we see a lot of beautiful character development and backstory being filled in for Juliet. Yeah, totally. I loved it. I I think it establishes a really beautiful relationship. And again, from the book, we know an uprising is coming. Yes. Establishing that relationship yeah. makes the uprising make so much more sense too. Oh, absolutely. 
because it's personal. Yes. Walker of all people should be frizzed. Oh, totally. Yeah. Shirley as well. Shirley should be up in yeah. fucking arms. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That her, her best friend yes. has been sent out to clean right. because of some goddamn conspiracy right. Right, right. by Bernard. Right. Uh, so I, I think like, again, these ideas are in the book. Yes. But you really have to make some assumptions. And yeah. And they're less effective. Yeah. The TV show is like, here's the idea. Here's the emotional gut punch. Right. Get ready because we're going to hit you over the head with this in the best way possible. Yeah. Yeah. And to be fair, you know, in talking about the book, we've had to at times kind of fill in those blanks ourselves. Ourselves. So it is, yeah, absolutely satisfying to see that in uh, taking on this new medium that, you know, both Hugh Howey, the creative team at Apple were able to to flesh out those yeah. uh, those arcs and those characters and to really give kind of greater legitimacy and just like plausibility to their their choices and their actions. Yeah. I think certainly giving Juliet the uh, the flashbacks in uh, where we can see Juliet develop that engineering mindset and just the instinct to at every moment solve the problem in front of her mm-hmm, in whatever mm-hmm. ingenious, you know, creative way that she can, uh, is why when she finds herself in the other silo, it totally makes sense to us that she's able yes. to surmount these obstacles because we've seen that there's a lifetime behind every choice Such that she makes, point. which is uh just really excellent storytelling, you know, yeah. if nothing else. It's great storytelling. Yeah. You also, I don't know if you wanted to chat about this now, but you were mentioning before we hit record yeah. that you had looked up some AMAs yeah. that Hugh Howey has done, yeah. um, not only about his book, but about the development of the TV show right. as well, which kind of gives us some really cool insight into yes. how this TV show came together and why some of the changes, the quite dramatic changes were yes. made. Yes, yeah, totally. And I, I, I'm looking at the comment here now. This is, to be fair, from two years ago, so a lot has tr- uh, transpired since, but uh, let me let me just read it in full. Yeah. So this is Hugh Howey responding to a question about his involvement in the silo uh, television adaptation of his, of his book, and he says, quote, I've been involved from the very beginning, sitting in the room with Graham and the other writers as we plotted out the beats for the pilot and each of the 10 episodes. Usually I was the one suggesting big changes and deviations, and Graham was like, let's stick to the book. Whoa! Which I just thought was phenomenal. I loved hearing that, and I love that there was that kind of dynamic, a creative dynamic between the two of them, where it's really, this is a chance for Hugh Howey to to really explore more of his universe oh and to bring to life the, the story of Wool in a way that really is his vision, you know, and you have to applaud that. I mean, yeah, for him truly. to carry that vision through to this really delightful end uh, yeah. is it's been, so to be impressive. clear, it's been over a decade yes. since he wrote Wool. That's right. And what a cool opportunity yeah. as a writer, as a creator, yes. to revisit a universe and story that you told over a decade right. ago and frankly, like update it. Yes. Give it like another coat of paint. Right. Polish it out. Yes. Obviously, Hugh Howey has improved as a storyteller in the last decade of yes. writing other books totally. and stories yes. and sequels. Yes. So to go back to an original work, honestly, props to him because it, oh, it must have been really cringy, you know, oh, reading my own. Has to be. Yes. Like, even like watching my own podcast episodes right. or going back to like short films I made as a kid. It's like impossible to watch oh, that. Of course. You know, you're like, I am the worst yes. person in the world. How Going I... backwards, it only gets worse and worse. You know? It only gets the, worse. Uh, yeah. So um, this must have been a really cool opportunity right. for Howie to go back to a story yeah. that I'm sure he wrote at a time where he was not as effective of a writer. Right. And now to get to hone it further. Yes. To like really tell more of the story exactly. he, he perhaps wanted to yeah. back then. And just how awesome it is to, and he says this, I think later in the AMA, that it was such a trippy experience to see characters that he'd written like yeah. come to life around uh, him. But he was like so walking cool. in the midst of characters that were at one point nothing more than a figment of his imagination. Yeah. Which is um, really yeah. just kind of. Or a... imagine walking around the silo that you imagined yes. in your head yes. 10 years ago. Yes. And now you're, you're right. on set. Right. Right. That's cool. I, I'm really happy to hear how involved he was in, yeah. the, in the series. And honestly, it's cool to know that he was the one pushing for the changes. Right. Because oftentimes, and like George R. R. Martin is the most recent example that comes to yeah. mind, 
he very publicly in a blog post was upset about the changes that House of Dragon made right. to his story. Right. Uh, and then clearly had to walk it back once the lawyers got on the phone with him. <laughs> Hugh Howie kind of embracing the yes. fact that like I get to retell my exactly. story. Yeah. I am not married to the thing I made 10 years ago. Right. And in fact, it's okay for me to lean into this new medium yeah. and tell the story in a different way. Totally. And he's clearly working with his partners who probably know more about film and TV storytelling, yes. which is a vastly different set of tools oh, natural, than yeah. pen and paper totally. on a book. And... Uh, wow, this is very exciting to learn that like two people who really know their stuff yeah. are coming together and, and relying on each other to tell the best version of this story totally. that they can imagine. Yeah, and and to be fair, I am you know obviously he's participating kind of throughout. The show does deviate from the book, yeah. but I will say it does still feel very faithful to the yes. book. You know, yes. like we're we're able to explore more of the silo world and universe, but. Uh, beat by beat, you know, it's interesting. I was I was kind of mentally comparing this to Three Body Problem and uh, the Netflix adaptation that we yeah. obviously covered earlier this year. <laughs> right. And you know, to your point about the the great pacing of you know Wool in uh, both the first and second season now, uh, <laughs> I think the thing that we most found kind of odd or you know a little. Uh, uh, curious when we were watching the Netflix adaptation of Three Body Problem was how much time was condensed oh my goodness. into every episode. Yeah. You know, I think by the second episode, we were, you know, encountering things from the latter half of the book, yes. you know? Oh, so, for sure. Uh, yeah. This is certainly not that experience. This feels no. like we are following, you know, a pretty, you know, be, pretty close beat by beat, you know, take of the story. Yeah. Just um, with, uh, with a fun kind of new creative, you know, uh, perspective on it. Yeah, I agree. I couldn't agree more. Man, I'm enjoying it. This first episode was a blast. Props to Rebecca Ferguson for yes. practically carrying 45 minutes of television <laughs> yeah. by herself. Yeah, yeah. And like she, minimal yeah. dialogue, yeah. and it's all just like physical acting from yes. her, you know? Yes. And I was glued to my screen. Oh, yeah. So really just props to the uh, creators behind this show. They understand what Slow Burn TV is all about. Exactly. They've selected a powerful cast of characters who yes. are just magnetic to watch on screen. Yeah. Rebecca Ferguson killing it. Yes. And I, then we get the introduction of Solo at then, the end of the oh first episode. Gosh. And ah, uh, just I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what Solo yeah, becomes. You how know? that plays out yeah, this totally. season. Because we, we have an inkling of how it happens in the book. Yes. But now it'll be fun to kind of compare the other way. Oh, how the show handles absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. All right, folks. Well, that is uh, season two, episode one. Some of our thoughts on it. Incredible job finding that AMA. Oh, I, yeah. I think that truly changes my whole perspective on the book show relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in a very positive yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm synergistic. so happy for yeah. Hugh Howie. Oh, Definitely. absolutely. Th this is probably the thing most writers and artists dream of, is if the thing is getting reinterpreted, let me hand me the baseball bat and let yeah. me take another fucking right. swing at it, yes. baby. You know? And he did. And he, he did. knocked it out. He knocked it out of the park. Totally. Uh, really great season so far. If this first episode is indicative of season two, I think we're in for a ride. I agree. And uh, I can't wait to keep covering it, which we will uh, continue to do That's on right. the show. So That's right. thank you so much for listening, folks, to this little bonus episode oh, about yeah. Silo Season 2, Episode 1. We'll be covering Episode 2 next week when it comes out, and uh, we'll try to keep up with episodes as they roll out That's and right. share our impressions in little bonus episodes like this one. Uh, we hope to catch you on the next one. Until then. Toodles. Toodles. <laughs> <laughs>